Hi, I'm Jim N4BFR with the basics from the Hamtech Library on FCC enforcement actions. Now, we know the FCC is responsible for a lot of things, including licensing and monitoring all of the vast arrays of spectrum, uh, including broadcast and satellite. Uh, but for our purposes here, we're going to talk about uh, enforcement actions specifically in amateur radio. So... Over the last 10 years, FCC enforcement has generated $133,000 plus in fines to amateur radio operators. These are just the ones that they have published. Doesn't mean they're all the fines, but $133,000 in fines to hams over the last 10 years. So a good point to show here is that FCC enforcement is alive and well. Now, how does enforcement work? Well, basically it mostly starts with a complaint. Now, the FCC has a lot of monitoring, and I'm sure they monitor the HF bands from time to time, but generally to get their attention somebody's going to go online or send a letter to the FCC and say, hey, I've got this problem, can you please uh, do some enforcement on it? The next step that typically happens from that point is the FCC will do some investigation and they will send a letter from Laura Smith, who's the FCC attorney at the moment, who sends these uh, letters. Used to be Riley Hollingsworth, uh, but now it's Laura Smith. And Laura Smith, uh, if you get a letter from Laura Smith, I would say make sure you follow what they say. Because after the investigation... And if it should continue, that is when you really start to see fines. Unless it's so egregious at the beginning uh, that they feel like there's a need to find, generally from the cases that I've looked at, it's complaint, investigation and letter, and then follow-ups to that result in fines. What are the kinds of things the FCC is enforcing? Well, they're enforcing expired licenses. Uh, I've saw a few cases that said, listen, you were operating after your license expired. Uh, and generally, there were other things involved with it. But uh, after your license expired, you were operating out of band. They are particularly sensitive to operation on public safety frequencies, operation on aviation frequencies. Uh, and even some operations I saw on CB uh, was a block locker for them and something that really triggered them to go forward. High power operations, especially CBs, only a, a, a four to five watt um, band. So high, high power operations in that band will definitely stick out like a sore thumb. Uh, failure to transmit call sign. This wasn't necessarily the only thing that they went after the person for, but we saw that in the uh, review of the of the FCC actions that this was frequently brought up as an additional problem. It's not only were you uh, causing interference, but you didn't use your call sign as well. Uh, but the biggest one was interference and people really just uh, trying to jam repeaters or jam HF frequencies or get in the way and, and be uh, difficult to other amateur operators trying to operate. Thought it'd be handy to uh, take a walk through some of the finds that I found. And the biggest find uh, over the last 10 years, at least that was published, was $25,000. Uh, an NAL's Notice of Apparent Liability. This is the letter that gets sent to you by the FCC that says, we think you owe us money. Uh, and this one was in 2015. Uh, this was interference with an HF net. There were noises and recorded music played over the net. Uh, also, uh, and I'm quoting here, racial, ethnic, and sexual slurs, quoting, uh, to uh, the person who was doing the jamming. And I'm not going to name the hams that were involved in this. If you want to look them up, uh, you can do so on the FCC website, and we'll put a link on the Hamtech library to that. Uh, but $25,000 uh, was uh, the repeated interference by this uh, ham in California, and that was the fine that they were given. In 2019, in New York, a ham was fined $17,000 with a notice of an apparent liability. This was after two warning letters were sent and an inspection visit. The fine was generated specifically for interfering with repeaters and threatening other operations. And I did some follow-up, and uh, this ham did not have their license renewed. So I uh, don't know if that was because the ham had... Uh, 
was not allowed to renew their license or because they chose not to. However, uh, their uh, license expired in 2020, and as of this recording, it had not been re uh, renewed. Now, the most interesting one to me was uh, this case in Louisiana, which resulted in a forfeiture order. Now, the forfeiture order, uh, the difference between that and a notice of apparent liability is the next level. So if you get a notice of apparent liability, you are allowed to appeal and say, hey, FCC, either I'm not going to pay because I don't think you're right, or I'm not going to pay uh, because I think the fine is too high. Uh, you are, once you appeal, uh, they will either change this or come out with a forfeiture order. The forfeiture order is kind of the final word on what's going to happen with your case. And in this case, uh, this hand from Louisiana was given a forfeiture order. Uh, they are active now, at least from a license perspective. Uh, what they were doing was they were interfering with a repeater. Um, and the interesting part was they had been warned several times about interfering with this repeater. When the initial letter was sent from Laura Smith in the FCC office, uh, the, the reply included the quote, pound sand lady, end quote. So the FCC decided they weren't going to pound sand and they continued to investigate this ham. The uh, FCC investigator was outside this ham's house, saw them get in the car and drive away and followed them. Following this ham, who was already doing QRM uh, into the repeater, uh, they followed him to basically the base of the repeater tower and watched him for the next 30 minutes transmit digital data and other information into the repeater stream, uh, blocking a net from happening. So uh, the FCC also called the sheriff. They confronted him, uh, and the FCC turned around and said, nope, we're going to fine you $18,000 for this. So this is, to me, a great example of A, there's no need to QRM or a Peter and sit under there and do it. Uh, but B, if you get a letter from the FCC warning you, you can save a lot of money by not actually continuing down the path of what you're doing. So take the warning when you get the letter from Laura Smith or whoever else it may be in the future and uh, just stop it. Uh, that'll save you some money in the future. So uh, that's my basics of looking at what the FCC does from an enforcement perspective. Uh, the way I do it is not to try and get involved in those things. And that works for me. Uh, hopefully it'll work for you too. Uh, luckily, not a lot of hams are subject to enforcement, but it does happen. So stay safe out there and uh, save your money. Uh, if you like this video, share it with another ham. Uh, please like and subscribe. Love to get the subscriptions up on this channel uh, to enable us to do more videos. But for now, I'm in for BFR 73. We'll see you on the air from the Hamtech Library.